Hello everyone, Aspic from the future here, editing this video, and something very bad happened when I was recording this episode. I actually forgot to record my mic. I had my mic muted for me solving the puzzle right here, and I forgot to turn it back on when I went to record the rest of the episode, and I didn't notice until the end of the next episode, so yeah, spoiler alert, there is another episode after this. Um, but mostly, it's just me going through why I did not like the puzzle. I mean, I liked the puzzle, except for the wild encounters, which really ruined it for me. So, there isn't much to see here, other than I'll just leave the audio playing. And you get to see what I was trying to say. Maybe you can make something out of that, I guess. Uh, but otherwise, we're just going to continue on. As you can see on the second floor for the Tower of Fate, now everything looks so square, but... Yeah, there's level 52 Pokemon. There's actually level 60 Pokemon up in here. And it, it kind of said it different. Now, normally for this point in the game, I've been knocking out every single wild Pokemon I encounter, but now is when I actually start to run from encounters. The reason I didn't run from any encounters is because I felt like more of a Mr. Dungeon game where you can't, but I feel like now that they're this high level, I'm so under leveled, and it was a big jump, I actually decided to start running. Uh, this place is pretty maze like. Um, I'll let the video plays, so there's nothing much to add. And I'm only letting the video play like this because I literally can't think of anything else to add, and when I first figured this out, I didn't know what I was going to do to uh, fix it at all, so... You know, just something that happened. Anything, anyway, nothing else really happens in this place. There's a healing stone right there. The one thing I've definitely noticed at this place is that, and throughout other dungeons in the game, is that the encounter rates are very, very high. Like, they're higher than normal. I think this floor was actually was getting pretty fine, but Especially like in some places, and especially the last floor of the Tower of Fate. Uh, the first floor, I should say. Uh, the encounter rates are out of the roof. Is that even an expression, out of the roof? As you can see, I went a long time there without getting any encounters, which is very lucky. Also, a fun fact about Whispery, it's literally mischievous. Just the sprite and the name are different. And even in the back sprite, uh, uses uh, mis is mischievous' sprite with Whispery's color palette. And the same applies to Whispery's shiny. So here we are to gold. I will still try to say the voice lines. To gold! Espic, help me! Ugh, Espic, I can't hold it. The shadow is inside me. I'll help you to go the thing. Now attack me. What? I can't! If you don't, then, uh, Espic, we have no more time. Attack me, destroy me now. I can't! I just can't! The shadow! Help me. Sorry if that was a little off. I'm watching this, like, in real time back end. It's hard to read some of the parts, actually, since I was going through them fast. I don't know what was up. Anyway, you're just left in this room with a ton of invisible walls. No real point to it, so I'm just going to skip through it. To, to gold! 
Your soul is mine to take. You can't escape my power. You are my pawn, my servant. To gold, soon, you shall be me. And I shall be you. This is our destiny. You can't run from destiny. To gold, snap out of it! And, yep, we have a battle with the shadow as well as to gold the sand slash. I had Dragonair and Chikorita out, but the course of strategy that I've been using for these boss battles is to uh, use Toxic and whittle away at uh, bosses with that. And Dragonair is mostly there to take care of Sandslash with Surf. One thing I found funny about um, this Garatina right here, though, is it's actually a Crobat. It uses Crobat's move pool, but um, it has higher base stats. I believe um, Golbat might actually evolve, although I do need to check that into this Garatina, and I'm not too sure if you found Zubat, but you can catch it, so in theory you can get Garatina on your team, but it'll always have Crobat's Moose in it. As you can see, Garatina went for a mean looking air cutter, which are... Actually, I could definitely see Garatina using both of those rooms, but those are more Crobat's moves than anything. And Sandslash is pretty free, so... That doesn't really too much to worry about. Also, I find it interesting how Garatina has three forms in this game. Uh, one of them you'll see right up here in a minute. Also, yeah, I just checked. Um, Golbat does, if, if you do find a Golbat, then it does evolve into Garatina. That's just an oversight. I can see how this game was kind of sloppily put together, but even though if they're gonna be... Um, doing all that to make sure the starters don't evolve, you could have at least done that as well. But that's one way to get Garatina, since I don't think there's any other way to get Garatina in this game. But it won't have Garatina's moveset, it'll only have Crobat's moveset. Also, there's Confuse Ray, which is another one of Golbat's, or Crobat's moves, excuse me. And the background glitz, which I am always very fascinated by whenever I see it. Especially with Giga Drain, that's actually quite interesting how the Confuse Ray background turns green with Giga Drain. It's probably because the way that the tinge is the actual background, not the tint of the background, I think, with Hyper Beam, because it just makes it tint black, even though the background is still there. And it just speed up to finish it off. I don't know. Choosing something. Probably Torchic, just to get the experience for being kind of useless without this. Also, I don't care to rouse Safeguard. You shall be me, and I shall be you. Your soul is mine to take. You and I shall be one. To gold! To gold! Snap! Snap out of it! To gold! To gold! Let there be eternal darkness. You who stand before me shall perish! And this is actually the first time we see Giratina's altered form. This is the first. The other two times were just forged form with two different sprites. But this one is level 60. And it's much stronger than regular Giratina altered. And unlike uh, the other ones, this one actually has Garatina's Musa. This Garatina, as you just saw, has two hundreds in every single stat, which is ridiculous. Um, we also have Dragon Breath slash Ancient Power and Shadow Force. The Shadow Force actually replaces Fly in the game. HM Fly is not obtainable in the game by any means, but it is. But if you did, it would actually teach how to force. Which is... Kind of a shortcut programming, but you know what? It's fine, you can't normally obtain Fly. 
As you can see, successfully got a Toxic off, and now that thing just I just wait and heal for it to just die. There it uses Shadow Force. I actually did change the text to fly, which is quite nice. Kind of helps that Shadow Force is already a physical move and Ghost is a physical type in Generation 3. Good news is that Swallow is immune to Shadow Force. I probably should have just switched that in when I was using it, but I wasn't thinking. I didn't think I had a normal type, but I forgot that Swallow was a normal type until I was looking at my party. But Ancient Power kind of sucks. Garatina should have one or two more turns of Toxic, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, now it has one more turn. Mostly just use this time to revive Pokemon because I'm gonna need them. What an idiot. Why'd you go fish out of force in your last turn? And but that is the Shadow Defeated, and the great evil of this game is dead. Espic. Impossible. Jagold! Ah, Espec? Thank goodness you're back. Back? Alright, I remember. I'm so sorry, guys. So, you all took the risk just to save me? Of course! Thank you. And Jagold joined your team, except uh, my team is full and I can't really add him to the team. So mostly now it's just the same Tower of Fate except where you normally meet Sandslance you actually keep going and you find a different thing. Actually maybe this could be a different form, I'm not too sure but either way don't feel like showing you guys I'm gonna skip through this again. Oh yeah, right here you can find a golden mystery box and it has loads and loads of TMs. So a very useful box. I'm going to be using those later. And you get Citrus Berry, Lumberry, and Leopard Berry. It's almost like the entire loot table for the dungeon is just put into one box. But that is the last mystery box to in the game, so... And right now I just go over, um, try to see what Pokemon can learn, learn which moves. Uh, teach, uh, Dragonair Ice Beam there. I don't know, I didn't want to teach it just then. There you go. Better than Dragon Raids. I don't think I use any of the rest of those. Return is useful, but I really can't teach it to anyone since everyone else moves, that's fine. Uh, I don't need to teach Torchic Fire Blast, and, and not, Aerial Ace is already taught. I'm pretty sure I don't teach anything else. I was, oh yeah, I was gonna teach Brick Break to Pikachu, but um, the move I would have replaced is Flash, and of course I forgot that Flash is an ATM, so I can't actually uh, remove it. So here we are at uh, what looks like a healing stone. You who seek the truth shall find the path that leads you towards your hopes and desires. One that requires the four elemental keys. I didn't read the rest of that. You possess the keys, you seek the truth. One who finds the answer to one's question, which one will open new futures. There's only one could choose that the future one desires to have. I, I, I could not read that back when I was just like going through that again. I don't know why, I was, just, I was reading that so fast. As you can see, this one actually takes me not too long to get through. Dragon Gods! Hello there, go-getters. It is time for you to return. But before that, we need to test you first. Hurry up, quit the chat! This bores me. Do not so, do you so not fall if you wish to return. Do we really have to? Well, fine, let's go. So yeah, this is another battle I have to do, but... I'm not too sure why I have to do it, but it's against all four Dragon Gods at once. 
It's actually the first time we're battling Brethren now, so I'll give her Pokedex uh, entry right now. So anyway, this is why I kept Endeavor, because I knew it would become useful for um, battles like this. And as you can see, Rayquaza goes for Dragon Dance. I actually Toxic Breath or not. I really should have Toxic Rayquaza knowing that it would use Dragon Dance. Uh, Breath or not goes for Sound of Life, which is a move that I think always confuses. Or not always, but it does a very high chance of confuse. So unfortunately, I can't Toxic something. Um, I laid... Actually, never mind. I won't say anything. Um... Uh, but do you get su successfully Endeavor Rayquaza, which is very nice. Unfortunately, it doesn't do as much as I thought it would because of Rayquaza's boosted stats. Uh, but it really is helpful. Um, also, Swallow barely survives the area lace. Unfortunately, it goes down to Son of Life. It's unfortunate. So the goal I'm trying to do at this point is the Toxic and Endeavor, both or all four of them. And I nice way to get the Ice Peel off from Rayquaza. Which crits, very nice. I'm actually just recommentating this life, I didn't watch this beforehand. And it turns out Debbie Hell. So yeah, Thunder Wave is the also the other status I wanted to use, but and I what do I decide to do here actually? Oh I just used Thunder Wave on Debbie Hell. I think I later find out to regret that source, I'm not too sure. Also, Dragonair taking the Dragon Breath is nice, and Sound of Life is not very effective because it's Psychic. But it does confuse, unfortunately. Interesting how all four of these dragons have signature moves except Rayquaza. It got Dragon Descent, but it's not in this game. And it's not as broken as some of the other moves. As you can see, all those max revives I got are now put into good use because I knew that there would be battles like this when I originally bought them. Also, there's Hyper Beam. Actually, I don't know what Breath of the Space stats are. Right? Anyway, so a lot of this battle is just by Pokemon fainting and I'm rotating in um, some others to occasionally get hits off and max five others. So like I'll often have one Pokemon or both Pokemon and try to use moves. Actually, not use moves. Uh, for five and then one attacks. Uh, I think I actually... Oh, I didn't actually endeavor Debbie Hell. I just uh, healed Espeon. Uh, but I do try on a Toxic Breath and especially since it just had to recharge, so I get the free Toxic off. Meltdown, that's a big problem because it is both. And essentially I could lose three Pokemon in a single turn. I don't think, I think Debbie Hell is the only one that has a move that hits both, so. But losing three Pokemon in the tournament, you can only revive two at a time is very bad. So yeah, that's why I really sort of toxic to Debbie Hell if I had the chance. Of course, Chikorita is not the most reliable. Pokemon, do you have Toxic on? One of the reasons why I wanted to keep reviving Dragonair and Torchic because they resist the Meltdown. Oh yeah, Meltdown has the burn chance, which... Actually, even even a Synchronized did work there, it's already paralyzed, but it's already a fire type, so it's immune to burning. Oh, so Sadus is head skin, healing the burn right there, even though it doesn't really matter. The burn's just annoying. And so a lot of the times I'm just keeping in circulation Dragonair, uh, Swellow, Chikorita, and Torchic. 
not as much Torchic in this battle right now, but mostly because to deal damage to Toxic and to uh, take uh, resist a meltdown. So let's see, now I have Torchic. So now both Dragonair and Torchic resist Meltdown. I also have Ice Beam Breath, I know that was interesting. Fortunately, I mean, Meltdown isn't Debbie Hell's only move. But yeah, nice to know that also Torchic can take a Dragon Breath, which is quite impressive for a Torchic miner that you take a Dragon Breath from, I don't remember the base special attack, but it's like at least 100. At least I think it's like 110 or 130 for Debbie Hell. And one thing about Gen Racing 3 double battles is you can lose like three Pokemon in a single turn. Because you send them in immediately before all attacks are finished. And that, thank goodness I got changed. I think that was kind of busted in some way. So Pokemon literally can't do anything and they're already like defeated. They don't even have the option to select a turn. Gets I get paralyzed with Dragon Breath, but that's fine because Swallow has guts. But it's not really fine since. You know, um, Swallow is now slower than Breath or not. Actually, actually, Cherry Berry here. Maybe I was just... Oh, I was already slower than Breath or not. Okay. So I was really hoping right there that Breath or not wouldn't attack Swallow, but... Unfortunate. And of course, isn't a Pikachu sent of Chikorita because uh, Meltdown. And now I'm just the left Pikachu Chikorita. That was a crit Dragon, Dragon Breath. It's unfortunate. So I'm really thinking because I could be sent down to one Pokemon if I max revive two Pokemon. Unless I max revive specifically um, Dragonair and Torchic. And Rethrona does go down to Toxic right here. 1 through 3 A. Just one experience point too much. And there's a Jelen, so. I know this strategy seems lame, but it's really the only effective strategy that I thought of or knew that worked. So I just went with it. Also, Heaven Beam is normal type, which I don't understand why, because it's not Stab from Angelon, even though it's Angelon's energy move. Debbie Hell gets fully paralyzed here, which is very nice. Oh, I thought I was able to Toxic Angelon. Never mind. I didn't realize. I spent Chikorita's turn healing. Yeah, here I'm hoping that both Angel and Debbie Hill attack the left slot, because even if Dragonair faints Debbie Hill, or it gets fully paralyzed. Just hope that Debbie Hill does not go for Meltdown. Alright, Chikorita is actually faster than Debbie Hill once it's paralyzed, so Paralysis isn't the most wanted status for Debbie Hill, also gets fully paralyzed again, but definitely helps. Also, 69 max survives. Now I can't lose. Also, I didn't realize Torchic and Chikri have the same HP. 107. Okay, interesting. Uh, they might have the same base. It's not too unlikely. Fortunate that Meltdown comes with Debbie Hell there, so yeah, I just lost three Pokemon in a single turn, that's what I was talking about earlier. And one other thing that Chikorita can also do is Light Screen, so that's going to become very useful for Meltdown, but yeah. Once again, Chikorita isn't the most reliable. But even if I keep like reviving like this, at least uh, Angelin is getting poor isn't isn't toxic, so it won't always be a problem. And then after a while, it could just become Devi Hell left, and I can wheel it down to that. Because you know Devi Hell can knock out two Pokemon per turn. As long as I keep max reviving, then I should be fine. Actually, I don't know how many power points Meltdown has. I think it's like ten or twenty. I mean, 
a WL can't meltdown and uh, knock out both Torchic and Dragonary full health. Because they're both not very effective bits, it gets fully paralyzed anyway. The heavy beam is so strong. Knocking out Espeon, Axie. Yeah, knocking out Torchic as well, but Torchic is much, much less defensive than Espeon is. Surprised Dragon Breath does less than 50% to Espeon there. I mean, it's base 60, but still, I expected to do more. Actually, maybe Espeon's 90 is like special defense or something like that. Because that's how Evolutions have like a 90 somewhere. Yeah, Heaven Beam just one shots everything. Jeez. At this point, I actually decide to attack Demi Hell, even though. So at this point, I also come up with the realization that I could actually use a regular revive and swallow the next time it comes in, so it's at lower health, so I can endeavor it uh, and do more damage with endeavor. Because swallow's at lower health, and since Demi Hell's paralyzed, uh, swallow will obviously outspeed. Also, Angelin goes down this turn, which is very nice, so. Then it's just Demi Hell left. And towards it, even though can de easily take him out down, not that low health. That burn doesn't matter too much, like I said earlier. Just not only because of shed skin, but it's not like I can heal it anyway. Because the thing with healing items in this game, your only options are revives and max revives or citrus berries. It's only heal 30 HP, so what else can you do? As you can see, Endeavor actually doesn't do as much as I thought, but... And there's no way to heal that paralysis on Devi Hill to toxic it, so... The only option I have is to just whittle away at it. I'm surprised that none of them have used Double Team this battle, because I was something I was super worried about going into this battle, but none of them have appeared to use Double Team, which is... Quite surprising how little double team is in this game because of how much double team is in uh, Reign of Legends and how much I think it will be in Life of Guardians because I've heard that Life of Guardians have lo has loads of double team. Also, Sasha so the Swallow surviving that meltdown, but Burn takes that anyway. The only reason Meltdown is doing that little is because of split damage and double battles. And I also get a free light screen, which helps with Dragon Breath and Meltdown. Actually, those are the only two moves I've seen it use. I don't know if it has any others at this level. Oh, interesting. It actually learns Double Team level 52. Uh... It has Aerial Ace and Hyper Beam, which it never actually went for Aerial Ace earlier, but hasn't really gone for Hyper Beam yet. Forcing Meltdown takes out both, so that's the one problem with this Debbie Hell is that it can take out two Pokemon at once, and you have two Pokemon with more than new moves. You can knock out four Pokemon in a single turn in this game, which is busting.
As you can see... Oh yeah, there's Hyper Beam. Maybe it did you go for Hyper Beam earlier and I just didn't notice. It might be out of the other moves. I don't remember how many power points Hyper Beam has. It's either 5 or 10, one of the two. I think it's 10, actually. But anyway, there goes Debbie Hell and with a critical hit Psychic and I won the battle. And that's level 47. 669, very nice number. Bravo, outstanding. Whatever. Yes, they're ready to return. Yes, they are. You proved yourselves. It is time for you to go. Yeah, yeah. However, from here, you shall face the puzzles of fate. Therefore, we will guide you to your path. And so, choose one of us who will desire to have as your guide. So, uh, that will be it for this episode. Um, in the next episode, we will go over what they are talking about and about the puzzles of fate and choosing one of them to guide you. Uh, that next episode won't be the last episode, as I mistakenly thought it would be. Um, but anyway, see you guys.